Hey everybody, the Bongus here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Anodyne for the PC and is brought to you by GameAnyone.com I remember playing this game like a month or so ago when it came out on Desura, this indie game made by Sean Hogan and Jonathan Kitaka. When I, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but in any case, I saw a video of this game at some time, and when I saw it being played, I just knew I had to get it. So I bought it for like a $9.99 on Desura, well, technically nine US dollars, but an extra three dollars I gave to the developers because it was a bit of a donation on their website at the time. And yeah, you can play it on Desura, it was greenlit on Steam, and in fact now at the time I'm recording this, which is May the 16th, you can actually get it on Steam now. By the time I got it, it was like $6.99 on Steam. Well technically, if you got it on Desura, you just get a Steam key and you can play it on there. But if you don't have it, at this time, I don't know if it'll still stay $6.99, but this is definitely a must buy, even at full price. But in any case, many people see this very similar to, like, the old Legend of Zelda games. And I must say, it's very captivating, not just in the graphics, but in some parts of the story as well. And even the dialogue, even though there's not a lot of it, it's pretty catchy. Yeah, you get through so many prompts if you want to start a new game. Because the thing is, there's only one save file you can have, like Final Fantasy 1 for the NES. Hello? Young? Yeah, your name is Young. Hey! Oh, you can hear me? Good. Now listen, you are about to wake up. You will use the arrow keys to move around. Even if you don't have, like, a controller, which I use, you can just use the arrow keys to move, then you got, like, a C to select, X to go back, and Enter is to pause. You got your map, you get your items, which I don't have any yet, Cards will play a role later, and I'll be sure to explain that. You can save, save and go to the title, save and quit, or just quit the game in general. It even keeps track of the list of deaths you have, which of course is zero because I just started. And you can set your controls, set your volume, auto-save at checkpoints, etc, etc. Like, this game just tries to cover all the basics that it can. You will press the C key to interact with objects and people around you. So this is a very vague tutorial. It's not going to get too meaty into this because there's not a lot to understand. And you will press the enter key to access the menu, which I just explained, which will provide you with information about yourself and your surroundings. Of course in this area there is no map, but later on you will come across a map. There is writing scrawled on this rock. Sometimes if you talk to people multiple times, they have new things to say. That boats true in some other games as well, especially this one. The Cloaked Man. Well, it's about time, er, I mean, greetings, young. I am Sage, the village elder. Nice name. You have been summoned here because the darkness has spread across the land. The darkness seeks the legendary briar to use the briar's power for evil. You must reach it first. You must protect the briar. Enter the active portal on your left to begin your quest. <sighs> it doesn't bode well that you're still dallying about here. Enter the portal to begin your quest. The Briar, and by extension, the world, are in dire need. Just go in the damn door! <laughs> yeah, usually when you talk to that guy, he just gets very annoyed if you keep talking to him a lot. The Village Elder in name only, for he is neither. <laughs> Don't worry, the statue won't say anything new. While standing on a checkpoint, press C to save your progress and set it as your respawn point if you die. That's actually very convenient. And if you walk on an inactive checkpoint and then reactivate it, you'll get your health back. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. But I don't see it being the case at all. So yeah, there's actually many portals all across the Nexus, which is where I was just too. And there's multiple warps that'll just send you back and forth. Hmm, I think we're gonna go right over here. To the left of the health bar, which is like these old rhombuses over there, is your little mini-map. If you want to see the full map, then we'll just go here. Like, the red square is you, and like, the blue one will be a door or an exit. It may be a warp to the Nexus, or it could lead to the next area. An engraving on the broom handle reads, press C to sweep. Yes, your weapon is a broom in this game, not a sword, or an axe, or anything of the sorts. You have a broom. 
Cleaning power activate! I shall clean out your soils from your body. So it looks like I need a key here, and the only way I'm gonna get it is just to kill enemies. You're gonna find lots of gates sprawled across the game. Some of them require killing enemies. Oh yeah, the key may be a single time to open a block barrier. Or you're gonna have to look for switches or solve certain puzzles. Just be sure to keep that in mind. And if you see like cracked floors over there, don't stand on there for too long because they will give way. What the? A mysterious figure. The story doesn't really explain too much other than you have to protect the briar from the darkness. As for ghosts, well, not much is revealed yet. Your broom is now full of dust. Attack again to place it. The thing about dust is you can actually use it to solve certain puzzles. More on that later. Okay, now we're on another strange land. The thing is, it doesn't really tell you, like, what the name of the lands are. Heads up! Uh, nice biking skills there, woman. Sorry about that. I was going way too fast. Oh, I've never seen you before. Are you a fellow traveler? Huh? You want to protect the briar from the evil darkness? Well, I have no clue what you're talking about. It sounds cool, I guess. I've just been on about peddling my wares. What? No, I'm not a salesman. Where is this the name of my bicycle? You you name your bicycle? Well, it doesn't have much of a name now because it's destroyed. Well, maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. I'll let you know if I hear anything about that briar. Okay, sounds good to me. In the meantime, I'm going to have to do some exploring myself. Let's see. Well, what I th like about Anodyne is that it really encourages exploration to a great degree. Like, you're going to have to be looking around for cards that are going to be very important later on. You also got to look for the dungeons. Soon your skills will be put to the test, Young. In order to make it through this temple alive, you will need both strength and intellect. And I assume that by this point, you have found a weapon? What? I, I mean... Yes, of course. A broom. Er, just as was foretold in the legend. Of all the incompetent... Hey! What are you still standing here for? Keep your wits about you, young. Will do. So officially, this is the game's first dungeon. I've seen a broom in a legend. He was on the map of a janitor closet. Yeah, well, this game does try to bow a sense of humor, which I like. I encourage games to try to break the fourth wall a little bit and just have a bit of a sense of humor. Such is the case here. Okay, these enemies you can only kill just by hitting them from behind. Because their mask will protect them from damage. Of course, we're going to be looking around for keys, which will allow us to move further. And there could also be some cards in treasure chests as well. So be on the lookout for them, too. Peripheral vision is the hive of demons. I don't really understand what that means, but I'm just going to move on. I can also use the dust to block the shots. No, I'm not talking about alcoholic drinks. I'm talking about the, uh, t the firepower that was heading my way. There we go. Just by killing all the enemies, the gates should be unlocked. And don't worry, they stay unlocked permanently rather than temporarily when you come back. Which is actually pretty cool. It's a little reminder that you will be looking around to unlock every gate you can just to make traveling around the dungeons and even in the overworld easier. Okay, there's our first card. Usually they're of enemies or people. Jello there, young! So good to finally meet you! Why don't you set for a minute? I was just putting on some tea. Putty! Alright, so let's just move on here. Don't worry, I'll be sure to hopefully explain why the cards are very important in this video. If not this video, the next one. In the meantime, let's just look around here. Sometimes there are rooms where the enemies do not respawn. They're usually very important because that means you have to kill the enemies in every single aspect of that room in order to advance. In this case, I still need to take care of that masked enemy. OK, 
Okay, let's look at the map over here. I want to make sure I explore every single area because I'm going to need to look for keys. I'll also need to look for cards. And I'm also very finicky when it comes to the map. Like, I want to look everywhere. You know what I mean? It's just a habit of mine. But for now, let's just focus on going this way over here. The bats are very annoying because they like to circle around you. But they are easy to kill like every other enemy. Well, bats take one hit to kill. Some enemies might take a little bit more, but that's okay. Okay, let's move you out of the way. I want to put you on that little switch over there. See, that's why you need some enemies to solve puzzles. Like, that's going to be an important facet later on. Okay, this time I have to kill the enemies. Okay, maybe that's not exactly the best placement of the dust, but it'll have to do. Okay, it's not so bad. Okay, there's another card. Sounds of those masked enemies. Are you an Ookchut? My mom always warned me about the dangerous Ookchut. Ookchut? Is that the name of these enemies? I think so. It would make a lot of sense if it was. Okay, this puzzle's a little bit tedious because they gotta keep shifting the dust. Remember, the dust protects you from the blasts, and these things don't stop. Okay, I can step on this switch. This creates a shortcut for me. That is why I stress the importance of looking around everywhere. You can create many shortcuts for yourself. Oh, isn't it cute? Precious little young, playing the hero. But I have witnessed every step you have taken in the land. And let me tell you, young... Not everyone here is as honest as me. Be careful who you trust. If you're so honest, why are you the first boss? That's not honest at all. Okay, this guy likes to bounce around, and it does create dust, meaning you're going to have to use it at some point in this battle. You're going to find out when real soon. Like, right now! You got to use the dust to actually dispel that laser. And also watch out about the uh, homing shots right there that serve as a force field for him. If you can get a good shot, use it. He only takes like a few hits to destroy. Like right now. I will be with you, young, whenever you are alone. And remember my advice on your little adventure. Okay, it's kind of vague if he's actually an evil person, or an evil being, or a good being that was just trying to test me. It's very up in the air at this point. And when you see these red fairies, touch them and they'll give you an HP upgrade. Right now my health is at 7 units. The maximum amount I believe is 16. At this point, you are still weak. If you hope to protect the Briar from the darkness, you must face your fears. The card you will find in this chest, and others like it, are symbols of your growth. So acquiring them is absolutely vital to your quest. A key will also play an important role in your quest. You must seek out other keys as well. Select the map on the menu screen to teleport back to the temple's entrance, and continue your heroic quest. Travel east and south through the temple grounds. You will find a use for that key. What, you want a piggyback ride to the gate or something? Okay, this guy gets very annoyed very easily. Acquiring cards is vital to your quest. Acquiring cards is also vital for other quests, such as earning credit or purchasing alcoholic beverages. Well, that last part's not true. Not even the credit either, actually. So we get ourselves our first of three keys, and these keys are going to be vital to allow us to continue on. A bit over dramatic for picking up a key, don't you think? The statue does not look like it will be moving anytime soon. So I guess we won't be able to do anything with it yet. But for now, it looks like we're just gonna have to leave it alone. Luckily, when you're in a dungeon, all you have to do is just go to the map, return to entrance, and there, it was that fast. Oh yeah, I didn't even look at the card of that boss I battled. I will be with you, young. Whenever you are alone. Um, good to know, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna try to activate every Nexus waypoint I see. Because we'll make things easier. 
Once a man came and installed a mirror in our bathroom. I was afraid that there was a hidden camera inside of it. I scoured every inch of the wooden frame, spraying Murphy's oil soap into the cracks, thinking I might short-circuit the wires. Of course, I never found anything. Okay, this guy's very paranoid. You say you defeated the seeing one? Ha! Huh. Don't you get that it doesn't work that way? You're just spraying oil soap in the cracks! Um... Okay, I'm gonna leave you to your paranoid self. I have to go now. It doesn't look like we can go that way yet. I'll have to look for another route. I consider this very similar to Zelda 1, because the most part, you're gonna just be looking around, trying to find the next place to go. And the exploration plays a very big role in that regard. But I do like games like this. I mean, visually, it looks pretty, and the music is pretty nice as well. Like, I just wish there were more games like this to that similar style. I wouldn't really consider this a very big game, mind you. You can actually finish in under three hours. The gate stairs, petrified. It won't open until it senses four cards. Yeah, you're gonna find gates that have numbers on them, very similar to the uh, doors from Super Mario 64. Okay, wait, there's actually a way to the south that I haven't really touched yet. Let me go there first. I might find another card. I'll bet you're reading a rock because you don't have any friends. Ouch. <laughs> it cuts deep, man. I don't appreciate that. Okay, there's a chest over here. I guess this will have a card. Yes, it does. Paranoid man. I don't mind being watched by the trees. Oh, he's very selective of who watches him. Oh, trees? Okay. Cameras? No. Won't allow it. That guy's biased. Okay, once you have the right amount of cards, the gate will open. Okay, I'll definitely spawn point over here. Okay, now we have ourselves a little enemy gauntlet. Kill all the enemies, and you'll release the gate. Or, well, you'll open the gate. There we go. Oh, of course, I did have to go that way. I'm not going to kill those enemies because it's not necessary. Once you open the gate, it's open for good. Okay, the dogs are a very tough enemy. Just hit them once, and they'll try to chase at you. They have a bit of invincibility time, so it's not like you can just spam the attack button on them. Survive, and you'll get yourself another HP upgrade. Awesome. Making a lot of progress here, which I'm very happy about, given that this is only part one. As far as, like, finishing the game while well, 100%ing the game in under three hours, there's actually an achievement on Steam for that. Which goes to show it can be done. Will I try for it? Uh, no, not really. Because I'm not really one that likes to speedrun everything. Like, if I move at a fast pace, that's because I've played through the game so well that I know how to do so. As far as the rest of it, I mean, I'm just going at a cautious speed that I can. Okay, looks like we're in a new area. The words on the sign are faded. You're going to see that a lot in this part. The lake. Well, that's what I consider this place anyway, the lake. Okay, so I'll definitely go to the Nexus Waypoint. I'll press this switch, and now I can head back here even from the start. So I think I'm going to stop the video right here. In the next part, we're going to explore the lake, which I believe is the largest area that you can see so far. See ya, everybody. Thanks for watching.